There are two main ideas that Plan 9 is based on, and everything falls out from that. The first is that everything is a file. Uh, this idea was popularized with Unix, but after Unix escaped the lab, others started adding things like networking and graphics, and the file concept started to fall by the wayside. When Bell Labs decided to replace Unix with Plan 9, uh, their takeaway from this was that they didn't make everything a file hard enough. And if everything is a file, then you only need one way to manipulate anything on the system, both from inside and over the network. It is a single protocol that handles everything as files in a hierarchy of directories. So that protocol is the 9 protocol, or 9P. Uh, it has a standard list of calls, both for transmit and receive. Um, they start with things like checking the version, authentication, and attaching the file system you want to communicate with. You can open files. You can read and write to them. You can create files and remove them. Um, we have these stats down here. That's for doing stuff like for the metadata, stuff like owners and permissions and stuff. Um, and then there's also flush and uh, clunk, which have to do with the boarding or closing uh, file access. From the user's point of view, it does make everything look like a file. And since you access the, access the file the same way locally as over the network, even that distinction is lost. And it is files all the way down. So if I check the Ethernet device, it comes back looking like a bunch of files. If I actually read one of them, so let's go with this if stats, it's going to return some data. Um, there's code behind that if stats, um, and what it will do is actually talk to the hardware, um, pull out some information, format it as some sort of text or whatever, um, and respond back to my read request. And uh, let's go check the system files here. Uh, sys source. We'll go to libc. And in here is where we'll find the standard uh, dial command or function. And when it wants to access the networking hardware, it actually runs opens and writes and reads. Um, and then it will return to whatever program is using it a file descriptor to then do additional reads and writes on that networking hardware. So, you know, whenever you want to access the hardware for the network or any of the networking stacks, it just opens it like files and returns file descriptors to the program using it. And this also means that Inside the kernel, when dealing with the um, actual hardware, so we got the Ethernet here. It's going to have functions that will respond to those 9P requests. So when you attach the Ethernet, it's going to do some code. Um, if you want to walk it, it's going to run something open. It won't let you just create them out of thin air. It actually will return a permission error. Um, what to do to close it, you know, what to do when you read the Ethernet device. So behind this will be actual drivers that do communicating to whatever the particular hardware is. But above that, it will try to create a file-like abstraction where you can open, read, write, and close. So all this means is that you don't need any special libraries or system calls um, to do things on the system. Everything is open, read, write, close, and the user space programs follow the same sort of system. So I wrote a program to talk to Wiz smart light bulbs and I have a function here called call bulb. Whoops. Uh, close that. And in it is, uh, here's the dial. That's a standard, you know, libc dial. It's gonna call some bulb using UDP on a particular port. Um, and return a file descriptor to, you know, then do reads and writes on it. Um, but the bulb, you know, this uh, user space program will also produce a directory 
full of files with all the bulb names. And I have to also have functions that handle what happens when a read request comes in. You know, it will call the bulb, get back, you know, parse some data from it and return it to you as text. If you write to the bulb, it'll parse whatever's written to it, make a command out of it and send the bulb back, you know, by calling the bulb. Call bulb event also uses dial. Dial also opens, you know, the networking files and writes the stuff out to the network. So some people like to stress that 9P is a network protocol, but it's also the protocol just used internally. So I wrote this file system here to work with the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat. It's a little board you attach to a Raspberry Pi. It has a bunch of sensors and an LED grid on it. Um, and while I had to write functions that would respond to, um, you know, calls to, let's see here, this is all initialization. Get down here, here we go, read temp. This will produce a file called read temp p. If you read it, um, it will pull out the, uh, the data from the sensor and tell you what the temperature is. Um, but even this, has to open a file corresponding to a particular device on an I squared C bus. Give back a file descriptor. And then internally I'm doing reads and writes on that file corresponding to that sensor to, you know, poke various registers, read back data, which then my software then formats into some sort of text and returns that back um, to the read file request. So, you know, this isn't just a way of handling data over a network. It's a complete abstraction for handling just data, period. So not everything is set up to be directly accessible as files, but as much as they can, they did. Uh, if you dig around, you know, in the proc directory, um, you know, you can find stuff that will report back, you know, bits of memory or CPU registers, uh, but they're not really meant to be sort of accessed directly. Um, Overall, it makes for a very flexible system. So long as something can be abstracted as a file, it can be accessed by a simple shell script or accessed seamlessly over the network because even reading the network hardware is also just a form of reading a file. Um, the next main idea was per process namespaces, but that'll be in another video. And until then, have fun.